I got expensive, cause wind is expensive. Yeah, yeah. I got expensive, cause wind is expensive. I've been reading all the water. And I've been shutting down the stars. Yeah, cause when it rain, then it pours. Yeah, and I'm ready for some more. 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 Well, welcome to the first episode of Put That Coffee Down. Put That Coffee Down. Put That Coffee Down. You're telling me you're watching Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. It's uh, the title piece that inspired the name of our show, yes. right? Yeah, I was watching it last night. I think you watched it uh, sometime last weekend, getting prepped up and ready for a podcast about everything about freight sales. Everything about freight sales. And thank you to all the people on LinkedIn so far, on Kevin's feed, on my feed, mm -hmm. who have encouraged us doing this show. I've said, hey, it's a great idea. It's about time you put one together. And we're really excited. The show is not just going to be about us, though. It's going to be about you guys. We have a phone number you can dial into. It's 423 710 977. That number works when we're live. So we still were from 1 p.m. Eastern time to about 155 ish, ish today on the East Coast. So <laughs> if you die, we do have a call screener in case uh, you're yeah. a huge troll. But maybe we'll let some through. We can always blow them up. Oh, yeah. But anyway, yeah. so we, we when you slacked me, you said the best topic to start out with is the place you have to start from, right? It is. It's the beginning phase. You need people to sell. So you need to generate leads. You, yeah. If you don't have any leads, even if they're weak leads, if you don't have any leads, then there's nobody to sell. There's nothing you can do. It doesn't matter how good of a closer you are. It doesn't matter how good of a cold caller or a cold emailer you are. If you don't know, if you don't have names to, to prospect, you're nowhere. You sound a lot like Jack Lemmon in, uh, in Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. I know. Here's a quote from that movie. And if you've seen it, this comes from... Probably the most famous scene, which I recommend you at least look that up on YouTube. It's the there's coffee so many, is for closer scene, but there's so many. There's so many quotes that yeah. people use over and over in that one scene, which wasn't a part of the original play. Yeah. It was just a, a new scene for the movie. Well, look at the talent in that movie. Oh, I mean, the talent uh, all was star. amazing. Yeah. All-star cast. Well, this is this is from Alec. Yes. This is Alec Baldwin. I think it's one of his only scenes in the movie, right? It's the only scene, yes. And he says, you got leads. Mitch and Murray paid good money. Get their names to sell them. You can't close the leads you are given. You can't close. You are. Hit the bricks, pal, and beat it because you are going out. Wow. Exactly right. Is sales, so for people out there looking to get into sales, new to sales, is it that Intense. Are, are, are people that mean? So that cold blooded? Are they really going to be that that stone cold? I don't think they are anymore. It depends on what industry it is. But I, I think there was a day there was. It was kind of that uh, that that macho that that mean. Just you're going to get it done. <laughs> yeah. You're either closer or you hit the bricks. Yeah. Either close or you hit the bricks. You are your, I mean, there is an aspect of sales, though, that no matter what anybody says, you are your number. You are. It's a performance-based job. And those KPIs where, you know, other other positions, you know, operations or administration, you have to, to do your job. And But but this is just, it's all performance-based. It's all money coming into the company. And if the, that money doesn't come into the company, of course, there is no more company. By so the way, guys, we, is, speaking of company, we are monitoring you guys as well. So yeah. if you want to keep us company, feel free to throw questions in here. We'll see. We will get to them as we get through leads. Um, you did what? You are like the master of surveys, right? I am. I am the, the master of surveys, which I started doing surveys, content marketing yeah. to promote my business and basically to generate leads. A beautiful so idea. And now it generates content marketing that generates content. Look at this. It's like yes, an Ouroboros it, it of is, content. Just the snake is. eating the snake's tail. It is. It is just sustainable. It just keeps on going. It, what, what's going to be fun about this show is we, this one specifically, we're going to be talking lead generation. But in general, we're going to talk about all these different tactics, how they interrelate, how marketing and sales are so intermarried these days, especially when it comes to social media, social media marketing, and social media selling. Mm -hmm. For your salespeople, I know that behind the walls of a lot of 3PLs. And I was brought into one to be a director of business development there. Um, what that actually meant was here's a business card. Get out. You're out. Yeah. Go hit the streets. I don't know how well that company's doing anymore. Um, you know, but I wasn't a great contributor to them, that particular sales job. I learned a lot from that particular mm -hmm. job. I learned uh, what to look for in a job, what not to look for, for the dirty words that are used in job advertisements yes. and all of those kind of things. There are quite a, a few hidden phrases in there, and like yourself, I, I 
I worked at a 3PL. I sold for a 3PL, two 3PLs, actually, freight brokerages. And it is I, one thing I know is that it is extremely difficult to, to, to sell transportation services. It it's, is. It's so hard to differentiate yourself. It's so hard to, to gather leads. It's uh, the, the close rate's so low that you just have to hustle and grind all the time. Well, Kevin, I'll let you in know a little secret. Yeah. So I started podcasting. This is an idea that started when I was at that job. And I was like, you know what? Here's a great way to generate leads. Let's start a podcast. And I'm like, what is a podcast? Who listens to a podcast? And I was like, well, think of it as like radio on demand. And a lot of people listen to it even growing. I mean, this was only 2016. A lot of people yeah. are listening to it. But the reason I thought it would be great in terms of leads, it was also it created a conversation. So I could call up somebody. I could look up someone on LinkedIn. And instead of being like, hey, do you want to buy some box? I could be like, hey, let's have a conversation. I want to talk to you about your business and create a bit of a relationship. And what always confounded me was this was one of the run by one of those dinosaurs who's always like, this is a business of relationships. That you hear that line all of the time. You do. Well, what better way to foster and create a relationship than give someone before you ask for something back? Yeah. Put them, g give them a spot on here. Yeah, whatever it is, whether it's podcast, whether it's survey, whether it's real content marketing, it is to, to start a conversation. Is is to and that's one of the, the lessons of lead generation sales and that is to is to basically give something of value before you ask for value. Yeah. And sometimes it's many things of value before you really ask for for the value. So I'm excited. In a little bit we are going to jump into it with Michael Caney. You took a survey with him, right? I mean, I mean, you took well, no, a survey I, of, of our listeners, of the people that you have on your list. He's yes. going to go through the survey with us. We, we did. We, we did a, a freight brokerage and carrier survey for, for sales, close rates, prospecting, lead generation, of course. And we have those results today. And we'll talk about that with, uh, with the man, Michael Caney. So you tell me, who generates the lead, right? So you get into this sales job. It's day one. What do you do? Who, who, where do you get the lead from? Usually, especially in freight brokers, it's basically the dead leads from the CMR, C, CRM. Yeah. Uh, of course, if it's your first day and you, you don't have any experience, then you don't want to waste good, you, you don't want to waste the Glen Gary leads on people training. But uh, there, there's a lot of business out there that, especially in freight, that you always get the dead leads. Yeah, the when dead leads that no one could close or there are problem customers and they get recycled through a, again. When you're a noob, like when I was a noob at my first sales job, I didn't quite understand why it was so hard to get leads because you go in the interview process and a lot of 3PLs, they're a little dirty. They will lie to you. They will say that we have mm -hmm. tons of leads. They will not necessarily say qualified leads, but you don't know to ask that yet. They will say we have tons of leads and we'll get into that. There's a difference between a qualified lead and just a regular old fashioned lead, the dead lead in the CRM that you have to, that may not even be in business anymore. There's a huge difference, isn't there? So yeah. a real lead, I mean, basically going back to, to podcast and content marketing is, is the, the holy grail of that is inbound leads. Yeah, you want inbound leads, but a lot of three PLs struggle with with getting those inbound leads. Why why are inbound leads more important than the outbound leads? The message you're sending out. Why is the one coming in better? Because of they're participating in the conversation, whether it's through a podcast or through uh, comments on uh, on a white paper or a survey. Yeah, you know those comments and that engagement. Uh, they're, they're engaged. They're on you know, the lot, right? They're, they're on the lot. They walked. They want you to take their yeah. money. Are you man enough to take, take it from them? Or woman enough? Or non-binary uh, enough to take their money from uh, them? A man, a man don't walk on the lot unless he intends to buy. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's another line from to, that movie. There's so many lines I know, right? from that movie. It's the most quotable thing. Get them thing. to sign on the line that is dotted. Yeah. So basically people coming in. That is the reason why car dealerships spend so much on advertising. To get people on the lot. Right, and yeah. that's supplemented a lot of times by cold calling and 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 digging up and generating leads on on the sales people uh, on their own on their own time, but they spend an enormous amount of money to get people on the lot. Now, if you were the new guy, right? Mm -hmm. I think we we touched on that in quote. Why may they not? Why won't you get the Glen Gary leads? Because you don't know what you're selling. You don't know what you're doing. Right. So you have to put in the time. And, and practice and really honing in your skills and knowing the industry, right? So, so basically, whenever I walked into a 3PL, they gave me the, the, the dog leads. Yeah. I, I called them and people were giving me freight. And I was like, man, this is easy. And then I turn around. I didn't know the market. I didn't know, you know, hardly knew a dry van from a flatbed, uh, you know, LTL from partials. And inevitably, people would give me freight because it was problem freight. 
And basically, uh-huh. they were just, these shippers were, they knew there was a problem with freight. So they gave it around to anybody. Anybody who could actually move this got it. So it does, didn't matter if you, you, you didn't know the industry or you're a, really a pro 20 year freight broker. They're not going to, you know, you're going to get the, the, the worst freight out there. That yeah. can't really be moved, and you don't really know how to move it. And then you're spinning your wheels trying to execute, you know, you know, bad freight, what they call cheap freight. Sure. And you're stuck in transactional business, which is the longest business, especially in 3PL freight sales. When you're moving freight, the worst thing you want to be is stuck in transactional, stuck in bid, because, you're A, you're going to get replaced by a load board if you're not already replaced mm-hmm. by a load board. But now you're just acting as a very slow-paced load board. You're tying up your pricing department, and you're kind of just a, a, a litmus test or a bar for, an, for 12, 13, 100 other brokers that are BCC'd on that rate email that they need. And then it all becomes about who gets them the fastest rate. The the Mm -hmm. three people who come back within that first five minutes. And if your pricing department can't compete with that, and most can't, what are you doing? That company I was with in 2016, I was like, we need to future-proof because Mm -hmm. this is insane that it's taking, that we have a 24-hour standard in quote reversion. What is wrong with you? And and you're lucky if you even have a pricing department. I didn't have a pricing department. You you know where my pricing department was? I would have rather not had one. It it was like- I'd rather have one right here. I know, right? And then that was mine. Yeah. I I didn't know how to price anything. So it was just- Oh, that I I know, right? Because I I didn't know the industry. You know, I had three days of training. And, you know, it's like, here's a phone. Here's a phone book. Go after it. And I went after it. and, And basically, it was a comedy of errors for the first six, 12 months. So, Kevin, you start your job. You've got all these leads. What do you go out? How do you go and get the better leads? What is a good step one, especially in the year 2020, for that new freight broker to do to to think about the process themselves? Because we'll get to it in the survey, but a lot of times you're not going to be supported. Your marketing is not going to funnel leads down to you. You got to go, uh, you, you just have to go and hustle and get them on your own. Social media is great and you're the expert at social media. So you, you probably have tons of, of tricks on, on, on getting engagement, not just cold emailing or cold messaging. Oh, don't never, on, don't do that on LinkedIn. Yeah, it, so it's horrible. I got one. I got a message from a guy on here. I'm not going to pull it on the screen, but I'll read it to you. And I'm like, why, who expects, oh, you know, they already banned him. They already made oh, really? this guy. All right. But he writes, hello, I've attached a document for our new business financial proposal for your review. Across the proposal, yeah. access the proposal through the link and get back to me at your earliest convenience. Regards, Donald, I will hide your last name for the sake of your own uh, and, enemy. And I always get DMs on LinkedIn about uh, equipment finance leasing. Yeah. I don't have any equipment. You know, you, uh, you know it, but, but then again, the, there's the other side of that is I, I did a lot of cold emailing in my life, right? And I, I just, it was a numbers game at that point. I'll just send out a lot of emails yeah, and figure out uh, w- once people respond to it, I- I'll figure it out from there. So that's that's a way to do it. It's probably not the best way, but sometimes that's that's all you have. You just go with it. Here's an here's an example of a social media sales cycle. I won't give out this gentleman's name, but I think he did a great job. So okay. he saw a post online about us doing a sales podcast. This guy mm-hmm. does some sales. He does some sales coaching. So he writes to you. He doesn't just send some some unnamed pitch. He goes, yeah. Hi, Kevin. I see you and Duna are doing a podcast related to freight. I have over 25 years of freight experience. He offers to help us out on here. Yes. He doesn't, but he doesn't want, he's smart. He doesn't want to lead immediately and be like, I want to be a sponsor. I want to be an advertiser. I want you guys to do something for me. He's mm-hmm. like, first and foremost, I want to start a relationship. And, do that. and this is why he's been in the business for 25 years. It I is. It, it is. And um, it, it is, it was a really great, great LinkedIn message. And, yeah. you know, definitely we're going to reach out very soon to him and, and start a relationship with him because uh, I, I know who he is and he is Short really and succinct, right? Short and succinct, and he's a he, he runs a, a sales department on a, a very large freight broker, very up and coming large freight broker. Complimentary, so, yes. So this brings up kind of the big problem, right? So you get into the job, you get all of the bad leads. You may it may be a while before you get any good leads, if you get any at all. You know, it's, yeah. if you're proving your stripes, if you get any, and there's a good there's there's, and you're probably not going to get a book of business. In fact, the funniest thing is you'll walk into some brokerages, you'll be like, I've never sold, and they're like, Well, what's your book of business? And you're like, I never sold. <laughs> what's it's, your book of business? Yeah, it's no quandary of wanting a 21 year old to have like 20 years of experience. I, I, or I know, right? Yeah. I, I know. You need really robust training training programs, and we, we talked about that on Great Quarter Guys a couple weeks ago. For for freight brokers, transportation sales, you need a really robust. 
uh, training program to get get 21, 22 year kids up and running. And a lot of time, t- a lot of times that's on carry the carrier sales side, but to get them up and running. But a lot of three PLs and freight brokers just you know it's a, like a three day training program. If you Here's are a truck, here's uh, here are the load boards. Here's um, here's some pricing and uh, go. Yeah, go get it. It's very, it's very abstract stuff too. If you don't understand it, like if you don't come from that world at all, you're gonna come in and be like, "I have no idea what to talk." You're like a cat playing piano. You have no idea what you're talking about. I, you have no idea what you're talking about because big city, uh, you know, pricing changes all the time depending on day of the week, the the time of the day. Uh, You know, basically, then you're negotiating with um, either truck drivers or or dispatchers, which is a little bit different from most industries. And it's, it's just really tough. It's really abstract. It took me months to, to really take the abstractness of it and, and put it into a, a concrete form. And it was about a year, about a year. So it's a long, long lead up time to, to really. Craig Bliss knows what's up. He says, I yeah. agree. Social media is great. Of course it is. Craig, you know how to leverage that stuff. He's got some of his own shows as well. He does. Which he does to give knowledge back. But in terms of content marketing, it is a two-way street. You want to put the knowledge back, but you also want to have people come to you. Yes. You're putting a show on stage. Who's in the audience? That's who you're content marketing to. Mm-hmm. So, so basically, you know, you have speaking engagements. Uh, but if you're starting out, no one's going to give you a speaking engagement because no. you don't who know are what you're you? doing. Who are you? Yeah. But, but networking events, um, referrals from, from, from anywhere else that you can get. But you just have to go out and it's almost a full-time job just hunting for leads to prospect. Yeah. Hunting for leads to prospect. But th- that's really the first stage once you come into to a sales job is, is getting that lead generation in place. So you have this nice top of the end funnel that everyone talks about, right? That pipeline or funnel that then you can start working, learning the industry. Uh, and you, you can, you basically learn a lot about the industry just by doing the research for lead generation, going through LinkedIn. Um, but th- there should always be from, from the company side, uh, inbound leads coming in. Yeah. If you don't have any inbound leads in your business, you are far behind everyone else. So let's think about some ways to get those, right? Let's start with social media first, because yeah. social media is a double-edged sword. The great thing is you can reach a lot of people. The problem is that to put out the good personalized messages, that takes a lot of time. So it's a lot harder to scale that. You want to save that for people who've already qualified themselves. So let's say you put a great post online, right? Let's say you have just started at a 3PL selling freight, you, you, you run this lane really well. Anybody who's looking for business, you're looking to just help them out, get your first start. If you get some likes on there and some comments, those are the first people you want to reach out to. But don't be like, let me book some load. Be like, thank you for your support. Thank you for supporting me in this lane. If you know anybody in the business who can help out with with whatever, whatever I'm talking yeah. about, don't even ask them. Be like, do they know anybody? Don't ask them for their freight yet. No, no. You, you, you just have to always provide value. And sometimes that's a really, really kind email or really just asking for help. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to understand the freight industry. Uh, do you have a few minutes just to speak about that? Don't pitch them. Just, just talk to these these industry leaders or possible customers uh, about learning the ropes. And you know, you kind of have to take your time with it. But the more that you're doing that, the the you know basically three, six, nine months, it's really going to pay off. Yeah. So think of a post you put on LinkedIn as your outbound lead, right? And everything that touches that as your inbound. So. Every single like, and and what some people don't grasp either is uh, that liking and commenting, people who like and comment are rare commodities. Most people are just going to really pass rare. by it or just read it or be completely passive. You're talking about the 90%, the 10% who like, the 5% or less who even comment. Yes. And if you look at your numbers, like especially if a successful post, if you have a post that has like 10,000 views on or even 1,000 views, let's just use a round number, you will look and you'll see how many people have seen it, people even from your own company who've passed by, not even bothered to like it. Mm-hmm. 17 freight waivers sometimes and I'm like what what is going come on I, I know throw, right? me a, throw me a bone here come on just a like it's yeah. just, just, just a, a button like. push. and what, another thing because they're that, amplifiers to your outbound message though they are ampli- even they if are. they can't even if they're not a lead to sell anything to or anything like that they are the they, best supporters they, the they are your friends online because they will make that move every time someone likes or comments it makes a ripple it, it does and one thing that, that you're phenomenal at is consistency you have to be consistent. You can't just throw out a message and think that's going to oh, yeah. you know, be it or maybe once a week. you got to consistently daily put that into your workflow. I, I'm going to post on here. I'm going to tweet this. I am going to maybe start a freight 
a, a, a Facebook page uh, about freight selling or, or freight or, or shippers or anything. And then it takes a long time to, to build that up. But you really have to consistently day in, day out, keep going, keep going, because it will pay dividends and much better dividends from uh, just just cold calling itself or, or taking the leads from the database uh, because those are finite. But if you really, really build up your, your personal brand, you get infinite leads coming in. Well, yeah. I mean, and you have to have a bit of a personality. A lot of times people think, well, LinkedIn's this super straight-laced place. You can't make it Facebook. But you can have a little more fun than, than you think. I think, especially if what you're doing is relevant. I mean, I wanted to have fun, so I made my work more fun, which is... Exactly. But look, you control a lot of your reality and a lot of your destiny. You know? And that's the great thing about social media and that, that and that's output. A, and that's the great thing about sales, too. You, you control your own destiny. If you work at it, if you get good at all phases of the, the cycle... You that, the leads are weak though. What if the leads the, are weak? The leads are weak. Then then you go find strong leads. Yeah, I mean it's all up to you to go out and control your own destiny. But once you learn how to do that, uh, you you'll never go hungry. You'll never go broke. No, Kevin, the world will always need salespeople. I do it organically. I never send bulk mass messages via LinkedIn. But I imagine some people want to leverage that for scale, so they will. Do you ever do that, or do you use? Do you use posts themselves as, as your outbound message via LinkedIn? I, uh, on LinkedIn, I just do my outbound posts. Yeah. And, and that's really the only business development I do. Uh, I, I've, I've, I've sent a lot of cold emails and a lot of automated cold emails, and I found it, it worked for what I was doing. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, you know, there's pros and cons to that, and we'll get into— So you like the emails versus the LinkedIn in-mails, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Is that what you're saying? Definitely. Definitely, especially if you, if you know how to, to build an email list yeah. where you can get thousands. Uh, and, and basically, you can either cold call 50, 50 people a day or you can email 5,000 a day. Do you think right. it's because when people get in-mails, and I know this is my reaction to it, I get a little like uh, annoyed or pissed off if I get an impersonal robo one. It's usually not someone I'm going to form a strong connection with. I'm certainly not going to buy something from them. And I always wonder, like, did, did, did this work? Does this output work? I think that you're right. Email is a much safer space, mm -hmm. and you can do those broader drip campaigns through email. I think people are more accepting of, okay, this is a broader, great deal, great offer. They're not expecting that Social media, you touched on my name, you know, and they're not even, they may not even be thinking that you just, you went into, you know, your, your LinkedIn dashboard and uh, just set out to launch to a keyword. I, uh, you're exactly right. And I don't even know how to do the mass uh, LinkedIn messaging campaigns. I, I've never really looked into it and I'm glad I never, never did it. Yeah. Because it really is. I mean, you know, cold emails and, and email marketing campaigns, we're all used to getting, uh, you know, advertisements in our email box, right? Or news updates, newsletters, right? Uh, but on, but but on LinkedIn, I, I don't know. It's kind of a little. I, I, I don't really like it all that much. Yeah, I, I just you know because I always get I always get these strange emails from from like industries that I'm, I'm like what, how they even find my name. So email you mentioned follow up. Is it important to run a drip campaign? Do you use automated software for that, or do you just send them out piecemeal one at a time? So so I have automated software for that. So basically, I just set it up and schedule it, and and they, they go out. Uh, so so basically, if you if you do like a free trial on on a product. Basically, I have six, eight months of, of emails that will automatically oh, go out. hold on a second. We do oh, have, we a got, have, we we have a phone. We've got a caller coming in. Nice. Hi, thanks for calling. Put that coffee down. Oh, hold on one second. Let's see. All right. Hey, thanks for calling. Put that coffee down. It'd be helpful <laughs> if I connected you to the board. <laughs> yeah. What's up? Who who we got? Oh, sorry about that. This is Grace over at Fifth Wheel Freight. Oh, hey, Hi, Grace. Grace. Hi, thanks for dialing in. What, what, what's up? How can we help you? So I wanted to I wanted to ask about dead leads, but I've been listening clearly for the last, like, 20 minutes or so, and I wanted to touch on the social media aspect. It's interesting that you guys have been, like, very focused on that. Um, by the way, hi, Kevin. Told you I called. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Grace. <Hi>. Um, <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, <laughs> so it's interesting. We've been interviewing because we're going to be hiring people probably a new class every four weeks for probably the next five to six months. And I'm noticing that some of our best reps that we've recently gotten have been marketing or finance related type of backgrounds. Um, 
and it's just like an interesting transition to me. And then you guys dive deeper into how to use LinkedIn and how to use Twitter and how to use Facebook and all that stuff. Um, I think there's almost like a trend going on in the industry where it's like you, you're not going to be able to be that Alec Baldwin, like hardcore, (laughs) just make the dials to make the dials. I think the targeting aspect is going to become so much more important. Um, and being able to take extra information, take information. Like we, uh, get all of our sales reps out the money map every single morning. Um, the broker updates, things of that nature, and seeing that the marketing and finance majors can read that and quickly implement that in their calls is just amazing. So it's interesting to me how, like, that transition is going to take place over the next, like, probably three to five years or so. But um, regardless of that hot topic, um, I did want to kind of ask you guys your opinion on the dead leads. And... I've noticed a trend that a lot of our dead leads are clearly tied to our past or no longer with us employees. And how do you... They're still alive though, right? I mean, to- <laughs> you, almost, you may yeah, sound yeah. like they're dearly <laughs> departed. Yes. Okay. All right. Whew. Almost got Hopefully. dark there for a minute, I mean, Grace. We need to requalify that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but how? what do you guys think is the best way to focus your attention uh, on those leads, and do you give them to new reps to hopefully qualify them appropriately? Do you give hmm. them to some of your best so that you get the true and honest uh, value out of those leads? But what are your thoughts? Thanks, Grace. Yeah, so I'll 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 jump into this one, and uh, and I appreciate Grace calling in. We'll we'll get onto it because then we got to invite what's his uh, I, Katie what's in there. Katie. If we can get to him. I, but, actually, this would be a good question for Katie. Yeah, actually, well, let's bring yeah, Katie let's in. Bring yeah, he in can in help here. us in yeah. here. So we we have Michael Caney with us, and he uh, helps run our sales over here. And if you wouldn't mind, oh, we lost a poster. Yep. All right, come on, Michael Caney. There he comes. Nine, come in a little closer too. Don't be afraid of the mic. Microphone. Six, five, four, there we go, three, Michael Caney. Introduce two, yourself, sir. One, zero, uh, yeah. So I'm Michael Caney. I run uh, the Sonar we Sales Organization here at Great Waves, and uh, I've been running sales teams for 15 years, mostly in brokerage. Before this, did you so, like that inspiring music we introduced you? Yeah, to? I was trying to figure out like what was going on. That was the it's, Apollo yeah, know, right? it's, it's very it's, steamy it's, in here. You guys I, are playing. I, I, I know, know, right? like, a vest too. Vest. We're wearing vests. Yeah. Uh, well, this is a new corporate uniform, apparently, right. according it to the Wall Street Journal. It it's a new corporate uniform. All right, so we just got a call from, from Grace. She dialed yeah. in, and mm-hmm. she wanted to know about, we were talking about social media, and she wanted to know about dead leads. Okay, yeah. I think we have another call. We have another so call. maybe we'll stack this up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hi, thank you for calling. Put that coffee down. Oh, here we go. Hi, thanks for calling. Put that coffee down. Is this Craig Bliss? That's right. This is Craig Hey Craig, thanks for thanks for dialing in. Um, did you hear Grace's call, and were you dialing in because you had an opinion on what to do with dead leads? Uh, great question. I didn't have one about the dead leads. I was going to talk about the social media aspect about you know creating compelling content to attract shippers. Okay, fair enough. So do that, and then we'll we'll get back to dead leads. So throw that out there, and then yep. we'll get back to Grace's question. Sounds good. All right, so go yeah. ahead. What's up? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I was going to talk about, you know, creating compelling content to attract shippers. And, you know, I heard Hill talk about, you know, LinkedIn and about getting the um, unsolicited uh, emails or um, LinkedIn messages from people who don't really know about your industry. You know, I can relate to that. I get that a lot. But what I find out or what, what I get success from is when I actually create compelling content without an agenda. When I create mm-hmm. it just to help people in the industry, when I just bring up hot topics and solutions for them, I tend to get a lot of um, a lot of feedback from people who could have great just based on that. Um, I believe you know creating compelling content, creating a brand around yourself can really help you become attractable to shippers or with people with freight and yeah, not you- going out there and begging for it. Yeah, you're, you're yeah. exactly right, Craig. Yeah, Craig, thanks for calling in, too. We yeah, appreciate you're that. you're exactly right, and that's the thing. You, you have to, you, you really have to generate compelling content that, that people have conversations around, 
But when you first start doing it, it's very important to note that you're going to suck at it. Yep. And that's the reason why you have to be very consistent about it because the more you do it, the better you're going to get. And it takes a while. It, it takes a while. Right. Like I can't, like there's so many young, hungry salespeople that they want to start posting and they want, they're mad that they're not Gary V like tomorrow. Oh yeah. 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 Right. And it's like, like, Hey, you need to build a lead list. Like, I think you were talking about like, you got to go old school. Yeah. Like you, I mean, there's nothing that, nothing beats putting in the work. You have to have an identity too, wouldn't you agree? Yep. That you have yep. to. It's and some people they get a little bit afraid, especially when they're new. They don't want to cross any boundaries, mm -hmm. and that's fair. And it happens if you're in a good place, you'll just get yeah. minor correction. Like right. so, how do you feel? First of all, because you deal with a lot of our sonar sales executives, right? Yep. How do you feel about them putting their own personal branding out there <laughs> and them using their own methods? Do you have a tried and true method? How do you handle social media? Yeah, I th so that's that's a. We're also a media platform, right? So yeah. I, I what, the first thing that I tell people is like, you got to be really careful what you put your name on because we worked really hard to build this brand. And so I think when you're when you're building your own brand, you also have to be really considerate of your company. Mm -hmm. Have they spent years building brand integrity, and you're just going to start firing off, "Hey, I'm so and so with ABC Company," and yeah. like I'm just going to start running my mouth about whatever my opinion is. Yeah. There's a lot of people that'll get out there and do that. My opinion about social media is it takes a while. Like yeah. unless you are known mm -hmm. in the business. This is a. It was interesting reading well, the survey results, right? But most people aren't known overnight. Most I, I people know, right? Everyone, built that everyone who's known, yeah. has has taken years. Yeah, I don't. I I've I've never had a top salesperson that's a producer because they were great at social media. Let me just say that. Yeah, you know, so was, from a marketing perspective, that's one thing. But like, mm -hmm. if you're a seller, like if you were, I'd be like, listen. Yeah. It's fun. It's cute. But like you're not oh, going to be. Doing he's it more all. Alec Baldwin. We interesting. So he. So Grace. So Grace he's is in a good from foil. Mission Mur Murray. Grace is yeah. a perfect foil for you because Grace was sort of talking about yeah, how yeah. your method is dead. No, she. But she <laughs> said that it's a little bit tougher to, and I think for a lot of reasons. For social reasons, you can't exactly be that Alec Bal Baldwin character yep. because you can get fired for that. You can get in trouble if someone yep. videotapes that, puts that online. <laughs> that can talk about brand. That can yep. make your brand look terrible. Yeah. Um, not saying that, I, and I, I still think in most companies there is that guy, there yeah. is that dude cracking the whip or that yeah. female because sales is something you, you kind of have to keep in line too, right? Yep. But, well, at the end of the day, really, it's about building like relationships. Like, mm -hmm. who who are you, and and how are you different than? So the number one question that I've always been asked by sellers is, who do I call? How do I reach them? And how am I different? Right. So yeah. if we're talking about truckload brokers. 15,000, how do you, how many do you think are active hill? Oh, you know, maybe 3,500 entities, but I mean, like, like actual freight brokers making calls. Yep. I mean, 20, 30, 40,000. Yeah. I've so never then, seen a really every accurate company number. has a brokerage. Yeah. So like when you are able to get through someone yeah. or they open your email, like, how are you different? That was my number one obstacle to freight sales. Mm -hmm. How am I different? You know? And so the individual has to be different. I know. And so then it has to be about the prospect. Yeah. And I don't think I don't think social, in itself, does that. It doesn't do that, but it, we're, we're thinking about social. Well, I mean, we're talking more about social media generating leads. Yeah, getting you to that point yep. where you can say, "This is how I'm different." But if you're doing really compelling content, you are differentiating right. yourself, and that's what somehow you have or to nurturing the leads even i or mean nurturing, we're talking yeah. about using posts using a compelling yeah. post be it about be it about sonar be it about a podcast coming out being it about a new lane that your 3pl brokerage has done right. or a new division or now your tms has parking in it awesome opportunity because one of the best things about lead nurturing is yep. whenever your company does something new that pertains to that person that gives you an excuse to have a conversation right and yep. that's powerful right right so um I think I also heard when I was waiting, somebody asking about how do you focus salespeople or what do you put them on to? Um, the, the, the thing is like, know something about your prospect. Like know oh, yeah. about how do they yeah. generate money? Like oh, what's the financial There's impact? nothing mm -hmm. worse going so to someone who I'm doesn't have any reefer freight saying, yeah. oh, I got reefers or in Sonar's case, yeah. showing them a reefer index if they have no reefer yeah. freight. What do they care? Or yeah. mm -hmm. if someone like we have that new fuel index, right? Yep. But if they're buying retail and not rack and you go to show someone who's doing retail, that person's going to be like, you don't know anything about my business. The conversation's done. Right. Well, mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're a carrier or a broker or even a TMS provider, you want to call them packaging companies, like know what affects a packaging company supply mm -hmm. chain. Like who do they sell to? Is it food grade? What, yeah. uh, where are they coming in and out of? Like glass, plastic, like it's all different. But there's a certain point where all the supply chains become very, very similar. Like I think it's more important to be a student of who your target is than to be great at social. Because you, if you put out okay content, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it resonates, 
isn't it better than like yeah somebody just trying to be i don't know why we're talking about I, and, well, and, well no because well, we were talking about it before you yeah. came in and grace said uh she was talking about the power of social media and and kevin and i have both been successful in that we spent yeah. a lot of time nurturing what we do on social media and uh, she had mentioned that when she hires people the best performers she's finding right now are people who have marketing or financial backgrounds okay so here here's what i would wonder is that is that because um, they're doing something on social or is it because of how they're wired? Like, has she well, just it, found it, a good it, hiring profile? It, it, and that's separate from, yeah. from social. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's yeah, that has nothing to, to, to do with, like, like you could put them in anything and they would be good because yeah, they know how to true. build a message, they know how to reach out, they know how to yeah, connect, yeah. and they've found a channel. And they understand the market. Right. Right. With a finance background, you can understand the, the trucking market because yeah. it's a market just like a, a financial market. Yeah. So, like, and you get money. It's a very rate focused business. So, yeah. if you understand yeah. money and you understand how to deliver bottom mm -hmm. line results, yeah. You can have conversations with people. So I, our number one seller last month um, did a great job. Mm -hmm. Really good at, good at social, right? I mean, okay. super consistent with it. Also works her tail off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Always well, on the yeah, phone. Well, yeah, I mean. I mean, so there's a, you look at, when you look at a seller, you have to look at like their overall energy scores. You do. So yeah. I guess that's yeah. what I always want to talk about with social is yeah. it's like, oh. oh. How about this? Okay, so the other part of Grace's question doesn't have to do with social. Yeah. It is, so, so you know, every brokerage has dead leads. Yeah, oh yep. yeah. Dead leads in the CRM. <clears throat> right. Grace, what's we told more, you we'd get back. I, I know, right? Yeah. So, so what, what, who gets those? What's more, more effective is to give that to the new reps or maybe the seasons people where you, you have better, they'll get better information to make sure that they're really dead. Whereas the, the, the new people coming in, uh, the newbies will just kind of burn and churn and mm -hmm. you're not going to get really good data off of that. Lead. What's the business segment? Are we talking about like a brokerage? A brokerage, yeah. yeah. Sure. So I would say in a brokerage, there are very few leads are ever really dead leads. It's a yeah. timing. Like when do they They're still buy? in like, business, they're not dead. Yeah, exactly. Like at some point, they're going to be mad at a carrier. Somebody's gonna yeah. you're gonna somebody's gonna call them at the right time where they're really upset at their current provider and they're gonna listen to you. And that's that, that's a great um, a great segment for for why you have to pound the phones. Yeah, yeah. Brokers, because someone's always mad at their their provider. Yeah. Always. So the more calls you make, the the better chance you have running into someone who's yep. just ready to make a decision. Yeah. So is is this a good time to go into with those dead leads? You're you're like this person had no luck. Is that a good time to go into LinkedIn and figure out who is in charge of whatever it may be? Yeah. Like, yeah. like, so if it's a dead lead, you want to circle back and go, well, did I, why is it dead? Like who, those, mm -hmm. all of that's completely subjective. So have the logic, right? right? It, it Don't is. believe in it death. Re yeah. Believe, be the, be the Lazarus of yeah. dead leads. Well, I know the company, right? So, so is the lead a person? Is it a buyer? Did, do they work there anymore? Did something change? Did they buy a company? Did they divest a company? Did they... I mean, I, so I was always a fan of like telling my salespeople, like set a Google News alert, like follow mm -hmm. everything, like look for, we're talking about put, we put content out, but if we're, if we're seeing something about a customer, like we should call them. Hey, congratulations yep. on sure. this growth. Hey, I know the last time we talked, um, you said you hate brokers and I mean, this is a lot of what we hear. You work with a ton of them, but mm -hmm. I also saw that you're really growing and we have this new thing that we're doing. So really any kind of warm lead kind of warm in. It That's gives you an excuse tip. to have that conversation. Yep. It's why when I was doing sales, I wanted to start a podcast because I was like, it's to go on LinkedIn and be like, hey, can I interview you to be on this show versus like, hey, you want to buy some box freight? It's a much easier conversation yeah. and I'm getting in that building 10 times out of 10 versus maybe 10% chance of, of yep. coming in there and then the conversion's even lower. The one thing that drove me crazy selling 3PL and doing brokerage sales, which you've done too right. and, you, mm -hmm. and you've done as well, is that it can become so transactional and it is mm -hmm. so quarter to quarter and it'll keep yeah. you up at night and it'll grind the hell out of you. Well, that and a lot of dead leads, again, it's like who's, who's, who says they're dead and brokerage mm -hmm. and in selling in general, like with junior sellers, they're very quick to go, I want to lead with something about my company. Yes. And so you don't yeah. know if the seller before you just called them up and kind of facted them to death. Right? Mm. We're, we have yes. this many thousand trucks. We do this many oh, things. Yeah. We're the yeah. best. We're awesome. Manufacturer. Oh, we have yeah. the yeah. Everybody has the best it. service. Oh, we, yeah. we, we, not you, yeah. not yeah. you, so, hey, or I, I want or to, we can help you. I'm calling to learn something about your business. I saw this article. I thought it was really interesting. We do a little bit of work in that sector. How do you handle X, Y, Z? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you handle this thing that's specifically related to their type of freight? Like, you want to sound different on a sales call? Just do that. Because... I can guarantee you that most sellers oh. don't start and lead that way. By the way, Grace said to you, yes, targeting 100% is most important, but social media can be used for targeting as well. Yes. Yeah. 
So you don't disagree? You no, just, I don't well, disagree. You just don't think social media is the end all and be all, and no. you think that sales is a is its own skill set. Like it's like when you're building a character in a game, yeah. you have to you have to give attri- you have to give skill points yes. to each attribute. Absolutely. So here is a perfect example. Like when marketing and and I meet, like I don't play in their wheel. Like I don't understand everything that they do. Like I don't understand everything you do. Like you're yeah. amazing at what you do. You're targeting things. I'm worried about once it gets in the funnel, mm-hmm. how do I how do I capitalize on that? How do I take really good care of that once it gets in the funnel? So in a lot of brokerage, well, hold on, hold on. When does the lead go in the funnel? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's interesting. In most companies, they have this marketing qualified lead, sales qualified yeah. lead, sales yeah. accepted lead. It's in Salesforce like that, and people are confused. If you go in, most people's Salesforce are, is all effed up yeah. because nobody like they're so similar, nobody will know which to put for qualified. Yeah. But in most brokerages, it's, I just want somebody to talk to me. Yeah. Like, I just, like, like yeah. that's the reality. Like, most, like, I read the survey. Like, most um, brokerages, there's actually more time spent on prospecting and qualifying. Yes. And, and a little bit of time on actual selling. Yes. Like, that's mm. the reality in most mm-hmm. truckloads, even the big ones. Yeah, even the really big ones. He he mentioned the survey, and like we said, every episode, Kevin will send out a survey beforehand. Whatever the lead topic is, we'll get a bunch of information on it. Here's a couple key things from here, and I believe we can bring up some of these screens too. But for you guys listening, one of the first questions was, "How much time does your sales team spend on generating shipper leads for cold calls?" The most dominant answer was 10 percent, with 20 percent, 21 to 30 percent being second. Um, you it, it declined basically as you got over 50 percent. How mm-hmm. did you? Feel Feel about that answer for your own department if that's what your sales guys are doing in brokerage yes. or, or, yeah or in even brokerage. here so I, yeah I, so they're saying that they spend 10 percent of their time i well they should be spending more I, I, that's, <laughs> I, what i would say is that's very inconsistent with my experience yeah yeah like people are always trying to figure out who do i call next what do I yeah call? Mm-hmm. so there, there's two things that happen in brokerage right you're either constantly looking for somebody to talk to you or you yeah. have a big book of business mm-hmm. or a, a big enough book of business for however your comp plan is wired and so you then you start resting on your laurels and you're just kind of you're just you're you're kind of, your you book. have your customers and you're working your, your book. Working book yeah. But like if you're actively selling, mm-hmm. it's all about lead gen. Yeah. It's all about lead gen. It is. So what do you think? Do you think the company should be more in charge of lead gen or the individual salespeople? So as in like I have know, two answers. Uh, okay. So I think the company should appropriately support however their comp plan is designed. Mm-hmm. Right. So depending on how that's weighted. Um, so if you're, if you're heavily incentivized, if you, if that seller is eating a lot of the margin, there's probably not going to be as many resources spent on marketing or content and things like that's going to be up to the seller. But what I would say, I mean, and we, we tell our salespeople this here, Mm -hmm. um, a a direct contributor should always take 100% direct responsibility for their pipeline. Uh, Definitely. Like, like, so if you're a seller and you're listening you are 100% responsible for your pipeline. Like if you have great resources from your company, awesome. I mean, when you started your business, it wasn't like I'm going to Yeah, no, I didn't have a pipeline. Yeah. I had to build I was yeah. I was completely it was all my responsibility and I I built it however where mm-hmm. however I could build it, I built it. I learned a lot of mistakes along the way. Um but I you know, it is totally my responsibility. And for any salesperson, it really is your final you know, it's your responsibility. Right. Let's move to the next one. So for prospecting, which method do you prefer? We had on here cold calls, cold emails, contacting via LinkedIn, other social media or other, please specify. Cold calls won out by 80%. The second one was cold emails. Contacting via LinkedIn, pretty low. So is that That's something surprising. that makes you happy? Or That's do you, would you, you want more contact? Well, so I think I think LinkedIn's a great tool. Mm-hmm. Their sales navigator program, um, it's pricey, but it's great. Oh, it was great. So you yeah. do, we it's, were oh, talking yeah, it's, about it's that. Great. We were talking about very good personalized emails on LinkedIn yeah. versus getting bulk mass emails. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kevin and I don't react well to getting um, those mass emails. Either. Yeah. If I'm here's if I'm getting a mass email and I know it is, I'm like, oh okay. Like I know. And what I'm, I'm talking about LinkedIn. Yeah. Like uh, yeah, an email. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. yeah. The context makes sense there. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very quick to hit. I don't know this person. Like yeah. so, like like if I'm getting a mass, yeah, kind of, yeah, thing, you have to I might disguise the, the mass. So so that's to my point about cold calls. Like with nothing should be truly cold anymore. Like a cold call is I'm walking down the street. Mm-hmm. I've never been in there. Like when I got when I was trained in brokerage, I got handed a manufacturer's guide. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, have you ever seen one of those? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Like you yeah. could. You could harm somebody with this book. Yeah. Like it's a, it's a, and yeah, I, I yeah. was given one for the West Coast and one for the East Coast. And they're like, here, you now have two time zones. Go. 
And I literally just opened it. And it was like mm-hmm. a week later before I was like, I'm not, none of these people have truckload freight. I'm like, yeah. They're like, well, you're calling companies that are too small. That'd have been a good pro uh, tip uh, on like day one, right? I, I, I know. Or the, or the cold call. Of, I used to have this really old sales manager who he would take you out and you would like, he would just drive around. You know, you would have like yeah. your anchor appointment. They drive around and goes, if you see a truck touching that dock, that's yeah. a cold call. Go in there. Yeah. Find yeah. out. Yeah. And it was yeah, like, so, uh, yeah. So in the biggest companies and smallest companies, here's how a seller gets trained. Kevin comes in and he's like, well, who do I call? I'm like, well, look around, Kevin. Everything here got here on a truck. <laughs> I know. You right? can call everybody. I would say that's irresponsible if you're if you're a company. Yeah. And B, yeah. like nothing should be cold. Like if I wanted to call on Kevin, I could find somebody that knew Kevin. I could I could drop something like, hey, I see that you're into research. I do this. Like, yeah. there is enough information out there on literally everybody in every company that you can warm a lead. Like you yes. can take a cold lead and warm it very, very easily if you just do a little bit of work. A lot of companies, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of sales reps, they don't do the work. What they do is they get an email automation right. software. They set up a very sloppy drip, and it's right. usually not even a good drip campaign. They barely update it, and they know what they also do that drive that infuriates me. When I took over as marketing director at a company, I went and looked through their drip, right. and the guy would update the first email, but he would leave the the other ones in the drip campaign unchanged. So like it would progressively, ma- it would be like telephone. They'd progressively make less and less sense. Right. Yes. And and because you're sending out an emails, it's so easy to get spam filtered, spam blocked, mm-hmm. kicked off your service. Now you have to be pretty smart right. about who you're sending out to. You, you know you. You're still sending out 16,000 emails or whatever it is, yep. and it's got to be a little bit broad, but you also have to be pretty smart. Yeah. Well, and, and here's the thing, too. Like, you pick up a lot of domain expertise when you're a broker because you have to learn so much about your customer to service them well. And so if, if you're a broker and you can get into one or two customers that are in that are in uh, one industry one, in, a, in an or area. I, wanted to, I was going to say like in a lane, but lane is actually a thing. And uh, yeah, you know, like so, lane. Yeah, yeah. Like, but like something that some you can know about, You can spider yes. really, really well. Like my, I'm trying to think of every top salesperson that I that I've ever trained, or none of them ever built anything off of drips or anything like that. It was always 100. percent I would call it building a warm book. Mm-hmm, like I, mm-hmm. we would get them into something that they could understand and they would develop some domain expertise around that customer. And then, so, and even if you are doing drips and things, you have to work in concentric circles around what you know. So you got to yes. pick a geography, you got to pick uh, industry, a type maybe, of ship and or, industry. You yeah. have to build in circles. Mm-hmm. What doesn't work is I'm going to download a big list off of Hoover's or LinkedIn and I'm just going to, cool, cool. I'm going to call everybody. Cool. Yeah. Like it's, it's just it's not the, the close ratio, and I think we do. We did a question on on close ratio, and and some of the the answers were just off the like forty percent. Like, hey, so no yeah, way. Robert wants but, to know if newsletters are are still a hot. Thi- uh, Whoa, uh, jeez, oh, Amber Alert or flash flooding. So, if, uh, oh, if you are hey, breaking news, if you are on Chattanooga, look out, flash flooding. <laughs> okay, warning at four forty five here, uh, and I'll tell I'm you guys. Looking on Market been, Street, I don't see anybody in a canoe yet. This is my I, first winter yet. in Tennessee. Oh my god, it just rains all the time. It just rains like six every days single straight. day. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's often. Yeah, it's just more it's often than I would have anticipated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. know that because yeah. <laughs> you came from Texas, right? Yeah, and like so honestly, like one of the first things I did was like yeah. I googled Chattanooga versus Seattle annual rate because I was just curious. Yeah, we get more. Well, I, it, oh, really? We to. actually get more. Wow. It just doesn't stop in certain seasons. Yeah. I guess that's why they, they have all these trees. Yeah. All right. So yeah. what are the most common methods? Use of the trees. Oh, yeah, wait. Well, newsletters. Too. Sorry. Before yeah, I newsletter. My ADD. Newsletters. <laughs> still good. We send out a lot at, at, at Freightways, and we do it for a reason because we get good results. Uh, do you think that in Freight, the repeal brokerage, as long as the content's good, it's what people want yeah. that we're Con- sending out? I, I Content is king. Yeah. Whether you're you're sending out a newsletter, whether you're... you, you um, you do your research before you make a cold call, or mm-hmm. not even cold call, warm call yep. to a, a prospect. The, the content that you provide, verbally, written, podcast, video, is king. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I, I, the key is multiple touch points. There's never any, yeah, our newsletter is inherently good or bad. No. I think it just depends on, like, if, you, if, if somebody latches onto your newsletter, they like your content. Mm-hmm. I think the answer is... No shipper prospect, any anybody is going to read everybody's newsletter. Yeah. So just yeah. know that you could have a really killer newsletter, but if they're already reading somebody else, it's like they're hey, not going to read yours. What's the average? Is like seven touches to make a sell, or nine yeah. touches. Well, so however you do that, you do that, and it creates brand awareness. But Michael, should this be dead? Picking up the phone, calling a place, talking to the operator at the front desk or their yes. computer system, be like, "Can I speak to your shipping manager?" No. Not at all. You you think that instead of going on LinkedIn to figure out who the shipping manager is and doing that research, you think you should just call that cold? So there, are, okay. 
So there are times where, especially in the in the brokerage and motor carrier world, mm -hmm. that l not everyone's on LinkedIn. Yeah. So if you're okay. really yeah, if, if you're really not. looking at the mid sized, the most underserved part of of shippers, in my opinion, like if you look at the mid market, like that's the really that's the thickest part. A lot of those guys are not on LinkedIn, and so sometimes the the guy that you're wanting to talk to, in between routing freight, like he might be loading the truck. Yep. So sometimes the the research, like talking to the gatekeeper, or talking to somebody that's like, hey, I just want to learn about your business. Sure, you get a hundred phone calls a day, not here to sell, don't know much about you, just want to learn. That's not a bad cold call. Yeah, that is maybe a bad <laughs> secretary. No, <I'm> just, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but no, here's no, the thing. Do you know how many people don't talk to the secretary? No, I know. Everybody. So if you just call her and talk to her, like, yeah. She'll talk to you. Well, you know what? I've noticed a lot of places don't have secretaries anymore. They'll just have like a phone and a book when you go in on, on the call. Like, yeah. They're the, yeah. It's a the, dying the, the, breed the of... Directory. Yeah. The whole... I, and a lot of nobody those, answers. Yeah. No so one you answers. Start, right, you just start calling everybody yeah, in the directory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I actually have an appointment. Like, I really am here to see yeah. somebody. We, and there's mid-sized companies. A lot of the, the people who are in charge of, of shipping don't have the title. If, if they're Correct. Even if they're on LinkedIn, they don't have title of shipping or logistics. Trans mm -hmm. It could be the, you know, the the operations officer right we're, you know you, you don't really know we're running low on time because freightonomics okay. is after us so lightning okay. answer just real quick buying a lead list a lot of people do this what do you think uh, I, I think it depends on the lead list okay. but you know certainly if you need to if you need to generate leads and you don't know any other way or or basically you just need more leads buy a lead list you think no, no. yeah my, my same opinion. If you can buy no. the lead list other people can too yeah. and that means that you're not the like, only person they're selling it's it been to. around the block yeah yeah and it's probably been captured in nefarious means, and you're probably going to get a lot of like angry people. And I bet if you put that into your yep. Mailchimp, Mailchimp will suspend oh, your well. account it, within like yeah. a couple don't do of that. newsletters. Yeah. yeah, never, never put cold leads into your Mailchimp. Oh yeah, dude, put do that for a tester. There's plenty of testing yeah. services. Mm -hmm. uh, what, Zero Bounce, uh, and I'm not going to name them because they're not sponsoring us. Yeah. But yeah, go to a site like Zero Bounce and upload your lead list, and I'll give you one back. Mm -hmm. and, and do that because mail, they don't screw around anymore. No, they, no. they don't mess around. No. Um, Let's see here. We, we want to do a couple shout outs. So some people, some people yeah. said some uh, nice things to us, right? On Who do we got media. here? On do social I, media. On social, social media. media. Yeah, here's our little get back. We want to make this part of the show too. So if you comment on any of our posts, we'll try and get as many of you in here. Amanda Lucas, director of business at Air Van Inc. She said, I am so excited about this. Well, we hope so, right, Amanda? Yeah. Hope she enjoyed yeah. it. Aaron Dunn said, powerful name. Can't wait. Can't wait. He does. He's one of the hardest hustling kids yeah. that I've met yeah. in yeah, this yeah, business. I don't know is. if you guys know him. He's on social all the time. He does podcasts for yep. this. He does a marketing podcast. A lot of stuff. Robert Bain, he says, yes, LFG, LFG, which means let's go. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> James Goforth, director of field sales at HNRY Logistics, said, love it. I was just thinking the other day that you guys needed to add a sales podcast to the lineup. Nice work. Good work. What do you think? Yeah, you excited? So we, we, we have I'm, this more offering now? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's great. It that goes by great. so quick, too, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Grace, of course, she called in. She's Chief Strategy Officer at Fifth Wheel Freight. She said, very excited for this one. Grace, glad you called in. Glad you yeah. tuned in. Um, like and share, right? Jamin Alvarez, he's he loves Freightways content, I and does. I love him. He's yeah. a great guy, and he's a lover of all things freight, marketing, and people related. He said, this will be great, and he gets the high five emoji. High five. Tim Hingham, president and CEO at Ascend TMS. You guys familiar? Yeah, the yeah. free TMS mm -hmm. by InMotion Global. He said, you're going to need a shipper director. Oh, Sally. Sally says you're going to need a shipper <laughs> directory to successfully know where to start your smiling and dialing. Yeah. And he gives a yeah. thumbs up and a smile. Uh, he says, go to InMotion Global. You can find that there. Th there you go, Tim. There's a little yeah. plug for you. Ryan Schreiber. Ryan Schreiber. Boy, man. man. He's, uh, he's he just wrote hashtag lead gen. He's the weak, picture. The leads, the leads are, are not weak. The leads, the leads are, are weak. weak. I could go You're out there weak. tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Von Henschel, Senior Logistics ex Executive. He said, looking forward to it, Kevin. Very good. Hope he enjoys it. Joe yeah, Lynch, definitely. another podcaster, right? Oh, yeah. Good old Joe. He gets the uh, content marketing, logistics yes. of logistics. He says, Kevin Hill, great topic for many freight brokerages. Sales is their top priority. Sales can be looked at as three critically important phases. Lead generation, sales process from leads to close, and then account management. I recommend dedicated resources for each phase. The cradle to the grave model where a salesperson is responsible for all three phases is difficult to scale and unless you want to hire a lot of people. I would say it's true in a lot of cases, but it, it may yeah. be business dependent. Yeah. Uh, and Melissa Price, Senior Sales Development Representative at Mobiletron Enterprises, she said, great logo, looking forward to it. 
Yeah. So cool she stuff. She used to do my. Uh, she she used to work for me, uh, doing marketing for for Carrylas. Yeah. 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 So. Wow. Good. The good that she, so, she got on there. Anything else in closing, Michael Caney? People yep. want to reach Best. out to you. How do they go about doing it? M Caney at FreightWaves.com. M Caney. Check us. Check out all of our oh. stuff. Yes. All of our FreightWaves TV apps. Everything. Go to the sonar We're everywhere. Page. Are sonar. you on social media? People sonar. can connect I with am. you there. Uh, I am. Michael Caney, I think, is my Twitter handle. Is it? I'm everywhere. I'm like, I'm not as active on social media. I know, right? you guys What about are. you, sir? Maybe I should be. Me, uh, Cahill at FreightWaves.com or Kevin Hill on LinkedIn. I don't really know my... my uh, what's my LinkedIn? Is this, I don't uh, know. Just Kevin Hill. You'll find him. Yeah, Freight you'll Waves, find Kevin me. Hill. It'll easily come up. Great Quarter Guys, I think, is my LinkedIn or yeah. my Twitter. And your other podcast, which was on yesterday, very successful exactly show. Right. Subscribe to that uh Freightcast, subscribe. You get all these shows, every single Freightways podcast, including What the Truck, His Great Quarter, Guys, the next show, Freightonomics, this one. Everything's on there, all on one feed. Or subscribe to this one if all you want to sell is put that coffee down. Uh, download Freightways TV apps. Follow me at Timothy Dooner. That's D double O N E R. Thanks for having me on, guys. This is the first show. This is the first show. First show of all time. You broke the glass with us, man. This is so great. You're going to be reading Art of War? Yeah, 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 important book, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. We'll get it to is. that one. Have you read it? I mean, Michael Douglas said so. My, yeah, oh, he did. Yeah, <laughs> of Gordon he did. Gecko. I watched uh, Basic Instinct on New Year's Eve. Oh wow, yeah. way back. Yeah. Yeah. We had to get one movie reference. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Holds up. We had to get one. Holds up. Well, we talked a lot about Glenn Gary Glenn Ross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, thanks for tuning in, guys. Yeah. Read Art of War. Yeah. That's right.